Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about doing camera motion in Clo 3 d So this is a garment that I created for the Clo 3 d User Summit that was held in New York a couple weeks ago. So the individual users who were invited to attend were also invited to submit garments for being showcased at the summit and this is what I submitted. They suggested that we use animation in our garments but I kind of cheated and just went with camera motion instead. I really like using camera motion because you can zoom in and call out like interesting features of your design kind of like call the viewer's attention to specific areas of the design that you think are interesting and worthwhile focusing on and it kind of gives like a tour of your garment so um i like it and it's it's nice it's an easier lift than trying to create a full-on animation with the garment um and keep it stable throughout because the garment actually isn't being animated here, only the camera is. Also, in another video, I'm going to show us how I created this hardware with my logo on it, and then this like interesting shape of hardware in the back here with this little heart ring. Um, but because a lot of people asked for that, but for today, I'm just going to do camera motion. All right, camera motion. Basically what it is, is you add a camera into the scene, and if I turn on this, camera viewfinder, you'll also see that I will automatically turn on the camera path here. So if I zoom out, you can see here's my camera and here is the animated path that it will take in like throughout the animation. Okay, so when I start working with this camera animation, this won't be here. So you're gonna open your file, delete that. And then I also like to change my display unit to seconds instead of frames. So then I'll know exactly how long my video is going to be. Another thing that I often have to change is this number down here to get a full perspective of this, um, like the, the timeline down here because it, I think it comes in like at a really small number like what's the default I don't remember yeah it's it's only two it's only two seconds so you can't scroll around to see where your your full video so I at least want to make it like like at least I don't know I'll make it 60 seconds because it won't be longer than that so now this timeline I can pull it out and I can see a full 60 seconds of video on the timeline here um, okay, so that's what I do for setup. And then the other thing that I like to do is turn on my grid. So if you just go into your environmental display right here and then show grid, it will set you up so that you can center your garment in the, in the frame. Okay, so now when we're set up and good to go, what we're gonna do is set up some keyframes. Um, another thing to remember is make sure that your playhead is at zero when you start your animation. If it's behind zero, like how how it's like minus 0.1 here, your render won't record anything that's negative. So you have to make sure that your playhead is starting at zero. And then we're gonna add a camera. And the, the, the way you do that is just by going to this diamond with the plus sign here and you add or replace camera keyframe. So I'm gonna drop it in. You can see that a camera has now been added to my 3D space. If I turn this on, you can see there's the camera and this is the point that it's focusing on and here is my preview. Now I don't normally work this way. I, I leave this off for the most part and then I just work in this window right here because you'll see as we go along that it just makes more sense. So the next thing I wanna do is move to the next keyframe that I want in my, in my animation. So I'm gonna move ahead by three seconds on the playhead right here. So now we're at three seconds and I'm gonna pick the view that I want. So in the first three seconds, I want it to zoom in on this double, double layer cup because I think it's interesting. I'm gonna turn on render preview as well just so I have a better idea of what this looks like. So, yep, I think that looks good. I'm going to add another keyframe right here by going to the camera with the plus sign and the diamond. And now if I have a look at that, and I play it, you can see that we're slowly zooming in to the area that I wanna call attention to for this garment. So then I'm gonna move the playhead again another three seconds to six seconds. <clears throat> 
and then maybe we'll zoom back out and we'll take like a three quarter back view. So that's the next keyframe that I want. I'm gonna add it and then I can move my playhead back to the beginning and press play and see how this is looking. Okay, so there's this, so that's cool, right? Um, so we zoom into the cup, but then it kind of goes off to the left here, which is not really what we want. So now we can look at our camera motion path and we can tell the camera, I want you to be, so we have our preview finder here so we can see what's going on when we move the camera. So I want this camera to be out a little bit more and I want it to be more like that and up a little bit or down actually like that and then you can see that that new placement of the camera has created a new keyframe down here on the timeline so we can watch just that section let's see what's happening with it yep that's staying in the center and then we're zooming back out to our three quarter back view. And now maybe I feel like that's way too slow. Um, we can just move this in to, let's say we want it at four seconds and let's see how that looks. So it's like, oh, interesting. We're coming in, what's happening with this garment? Oh, that's cool, it has a double layer cup and double layer straps, interesting. Okay, now we can speed up a little bit and go back out to this back view. Okay, if this file looks a little bit different right now, it's because I had to close my computer and I forgot to save the in progress file. So I just quickly got us back to here where we were at and the next step would be to um, zoom in on this heart hardware. So I'm gonna move my playhead forward uh, for, no, nah, let's, go, let's go with seven seconds. And then, actually, let me go back to this one and then seven seconds. And then I'm gonna zoom in on the heart hardware in the back, probably something like that. And then I'm going to take a keyframe here. Now I wanna look at what's happening with my camera because I want it actually focused on the heart hardware. All right, um, so let's play that. Zooming in. And then I wanna track it across the screen, sort of like that. So let's move the playhead again forward to 10 seconds. And then drag it across like that and add a keyframe. Let's see how that looks. Cute. So something like that. And then um, maybe I don't want it to track around the screen like that. So let's see what I can do. Um, Let's say here, let's turn on the camera preview and look at the track. I want you to be tracking the heart hardware. Let's see what that does. So it zooms in, tracks across, and then, all right, so this section here, I don't like how this dot this blue dot is moving across so let's bring it to here and let's put it back i think every keyframe needs to track one section if i'm not mistaken so let's go back to this keyframe and it's tracking the heart hardware 
yeah, between there and there. So I'm actually going to go to this keyframe and then I'm going to say, I want you still focused on this. Okay, let's see how that looks. Yeah, better, I think. Okay, let's close this and see how it looks. So it zooms in, tracks the heart, perfect. Zooms around, and then we come back out. Okay, I like that. And then, um, so it's just basically that. You can play with the timings of your keyframes and where you put them. So let's just finish this off. Let's go to uh, 12 seconds. We'll zoom back out so you can see the big bow on the side. So zoom out. Let's look at this cute bow like that. And then let's take a, a uh, keyframe there and then back to the front. Actually got to move it first. So move the playhead first. Let's go to 15 seconds. and then front view, and then take a keyframe. Okay, let's watch this all. So we zoom in to the double layered cup, and then we quickly zoom out, and then we zoom into the heart hardware, and then we track the heart hardware slowly across the screen, and zoom back out to his hide view, And then back to a front view. Cool. Okay, so this looks a little bit different than the final version that I actually played with. Um, I just played around with the keyframes and where they were and uh, how much time was in between each keyframe. And then once I finished the animation and I was happy with how it looked, you go into your render and then you set up the render. So um, you just go into your render settings. You make sure that you select animation. Um, colorway is current play region. Um, I usually select play the, I actually usually select entire region. I'm not entirely sure what the differences between these two are. Uh, so I just go with entire region and then I can crop out anything that I don't want in the end. Save video on, I use 60 frames per second. Um, GIF is not required. Uh, 1920 by 1080 is sort of your standard um, height and width for most videos. Background color, it says none, but I, I have a color applied. Which one do I have? I have vignette two applied here. So this one, and then I don't know why it says color none. Because I definitely have a color applied here. Yeah. See, when it's black, you can't even see it. There is black applied. It's this, yeah. It's this like not quite all the way black, but slightly off. So there is a color applied. Crop. We don't need it cropped. You can give your project a name here if you want or, or just the project name. Um, your image format and your video format. For this, I don't have any special camera settings applied for lighting. I just have, uh, I have light five applied here. I, I like to use light five. And then I just messed around with the light intensity to where I, I liked it and the light angle is 30. Um, and I lock the light to camera so that it's consistent around the whole garment. Um, and then for render settings, I use 0 0.02 and, uh, is three. So my, com my computer takes about three hours to, to render a video like this. Um, so I usually just set it up at night <laughs> when I'm done, when I'm done my work for the day, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll set up like these longer renders in the evening so that it's not messing around with my work day. Um, okay. So that's it. That's how I created camera motion in this is super fun. And I think it creates a really interesting visual for, um, showcase casing your your garment. One last thing I want to show you. I saw this in another YouTube video by Digital Fashion Salad who does some really interesting stuff. Um, she set up custom views. So if you can just set up, let me just delete these. Um, 
you could just set up custom views. So I'm going to add a custom view here and then I'm going to add another one here. And you just set them up. You just right click in your 3D space and then go down to custom view. And then you can save these out as custom views that you can co keep coming back to for different garments. Um, let's say I save a custom view here and another one here and then add and then when you go to your animation I'm just going to delete this camera um, you can just use your custom views to create keyframes so you can create one here and then move your playhead uh, forward to three and then add go to your next custom view and then add your keyframe and then move ahead to maybe six Uh, something like that and then go to your third custom view and then add your keyframe etc etc so and then you can hit play and preview what's happening whoops I hit simulate <laughs> uh, and that's a nice way to save out your custom views along with your keyframes and then you can go through and modify the perspective and the camera's angles and add keyframes like I did, like I showed you throughout the rest of this video. So hope that helps. Um, if you're interested in learning more about using Clo 3D for intimate apparel, I have developed a course specifically designed for either beginners in Clo 3D that want to focus on intimate apparel or intimate apparel designers who want to learn about Clo 3D. I walk you through all the steps on how to get started with using Clo for intimate. So you can go check that out if you're interested. I will drop a link below. And if you have any comments or requests for other videos, I would love to hear them. Talk to you later. Bye.